Hello everyone, this is Ellen George with Great Lakes Cisco and I'm here at the 13th International Corrigonid Symposium in Bayfield, Wisconsin. Um, right now we have our poster social and I am here with Bill Carter from U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Alaska and he is going to be telling us about um, his research on uh, thawing permafrost and its effect on inconnue spawning. Uh, so I'm going to flip it around to you. And it's all you when you're ready. All right. Hey, uh, so uh, we had some anecdotal information about um, some fish that were spawning in an area that uh, hadn't been recognized as a spawning area in the Selwick uh, Refuge. Um, the, major, the, the main spawning area is here on the, the main stem of the, the uh, Selwick River, um, and it's about 40 kilometers downstream from this big uh, mudslide. This is what it looked like in 2004. And this is what it currently looks like. It's it's pretty uh, stabilized now, um, but uh, we had some hunters find some uh, spawning ready fish on the uh, the Tagwick River, and uh, so we went up there to see if if they were uh, they were actually there. So we put in uh, 30 radio tags, and those fish um, moved upstream from where they were tagged, and then. Um, Subsequently, that same, about a month later when we went to look for them again, three of them had moved to the main spawning area. Um, and then the next year, these tags are, were good for five years. The next year, we found all of those tag, or we found a portion of the tagged fish, um, the ones that had decided to, to spawn again that year, um, on the, the main stem, the main, in the main spawning area. So um, now our next step in this in this whole thing is to um, find out if they've established a new spawning area. Um, it takes a long time. These fish don't mature. The males don't mature until they're 10 years old. So we're going to. Uh, so the, the slump started in 2004. We tagged in 2007. We know there are fish there. Um, so this year and last year are probably some of the first fish that are to get back there. The females may not get there until next year, so that's when we're going to go and, and look to see if there's uh, any, any fish on the spawning grounds that have returned from that, those initial years of spawning. Awesome. Um, so if you have any questions and you're watching, go ahead and type them in and I can ask them to, uh, to Bill. Um, so I had a question about just the spawning habitat in the river. Is there, are they, do they have um, a specific habitat requirement that was um, inundated they do, by the but permafrost thumb, slump? Or what do you think is driving the, the so, change? So we, we think that the reason that they decide to go in the tag is because of the, the difference in the, um, just the silt load. Okay. And it was just an opportunity to, you know, try something different. I mean, we mm -hmm. all know that whitefish kind of, do their own thing sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but as far as as far as the con the major concern that we have is is that the substrate um, would get uh, either impacted, so there's no spaces for the for the eggs to land in, or it would be impacted enough that it would change the the flow regime. Okay. In mm -hmm. in the main in the main cell, and we have a whole other project that's working on that issue. Awesome. So. Um, and I know that uh, permafrost thawing is becoming a much larger issue in northern climates recently. Um, there was a viral video on permafrost thawing last week on uh, the internet. I don't remember where it was, but it was like it looked like a lava flow oh, yeah. coming down. So that's very similar to what happened yeah. here. Uh, do you think that um, like this is is this an isolated incident where it's affecting white uh, inconu spawning, or do you think that this is something that might become more prevalent as permafrost begins to thaw more? Oh, so you need very kind of specific uh, parameters for this type of catastrophic okay. um, thing. But there's lots of places where we have uh, on the refuge we have lakes that are now. Uh, um, draining out because they don't they no longer have a frozen bowl to sit in oh, uh -huh. um, so now when they have uh, you know the spring thaw events the um, the runoff can actually cut through the permafrost or oh. cut through the the bank rather when it was frozen before it couldn't get it couldn't cut through that mm -hmm. frozen stuff so okay um, so there's they, all the, kinds the permafrost of was a lot of the structure of the lake bed yeah itself. but the the really interesting thing is one of the geologists who looked at this um, 
showed that there was an old slump here on, on the downstream side, it was about a thousand years ago, and a much smaller one on the, this side, just on the upstream side, that was about 200 years ago. Oh, okay. So they've managed to, I mean, these are really long lived fish. Um, mm -hmm. We have fish in the 30 year old range, um, like the average age is in the 20s. Um, so, um, and they're, they're not, uh, you know, every, they don't spawn every single year. They're, they have, they do all kinds of different skip spawning and stuff. Um, so their likelihood with their longevity and their, uh, uh, reproductive habits, mm -hmm. something like this. So that the worst of this happened between 2000, the worst siltation happened between 2004 and 2008. Um, and then it's, it's been less and less as the, so instead of this giant head wall, it's started to fill itself in okay. as it melts back. So there's less there's less silt coming into the river. Okay. Um, right now it's it's almost except for during heavy rains and um, and spring runoff, there's pretty much no no flow into the river. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much sure. for sharing with us. Um, if any of you are watching later and you have any questions, you can go ahead and comment on the video and I can relay them to Bill if uh, right. I can't get the answer myself. So thank Great. you so much. Sure. Um, and we'll see you, uh, you guys in a few more minutes for um, some more talks. Bye.